we've got a simple real analysis sequence exercise to go over today. Let an be a sequence and assume that it converges to some real number a. We want to prove that the sequence consisting of the absolute values of the terms of an converges to the absolute value of a. So roughly speaking, the absolute value of a convergent sequence converges to the absolute value of the limit. This is a very straightforward proof, so definitely give it a try yourself before watching the rest of the lesson. If you need a hint, the hint is reverse triangle inequality. Intuitively, does this result make sense that the absolute value of a convergent sequence would converge to the absolute value of the limit? I would certainly say so. If the sequence consists of positive terms, then its absolute value is going to be the same. If the sequence consists of negative terms, then the absolute value will be like a reflection across zero on the number line. That changes where the numbers are, so instead of converging to a, they would converge to the absolute value of a, but it doesn't change their behavior. They're still converging. And if the sequence is alternating between positive and negative, then taking the absolute value will just squish everything closer together by making the negatives positives, so still seems reasonable that it should converge. But enough thinking about it, let's go ahead and work on the proof. Since we're trying to prove that the sequence of absolute values of a n converges to the absolute value of a, We'll be trying to show that the absolute value of a term of the sequence, which has this form, is less than epsilon away from the limit. So this is our expression representing the distance between a term of our sequence and the supposed limit. When you see this difference of absolute values in an absolute value, you should immediately think of the reverse triangle inequality. Recall that the ordinary triangle inequality tells us that the absolute value of a sum is less than or equal to the sum of the individual absolute values. But the reverse triangle inequality tells us that the absolute value of the difference of absolute values is less than or equal to the absolute value of their difference without the internal absolute value bars. I'll leave a link in the description to my lessons proving the triangle inequality theorems. Now, of course, it doesn't get better than this expression because we know that the sequence a n converges to a. So we can make this as small as we want. We can certainly make it less than epsilon. With that in mind, we can bring this down a little bit and just fill in the holes for the rest of our proof. We, of course, need to take an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. As usual, before this string of inequalities, we would say for all n greater than big N, and we need to choose a big N that will make this work. We will get that big N from the fact that a n converges to a. And here those details are written out. Since a n converges to a, that was our assumption, we know that there exists a number big N so that for all terms of a n after the big nth term, their distance from the limit a is less than epsilon. Then concerning our sequence, the absolute value of a n, we have that for all terms after the big nth term, the distance between those terms of the sequence and the absolute value of a is less than or equal to the absolute value of a n minus a. Again, that is by the reverse triangle inequality. But then we already know that this distance is less than epsilon whenever n is greater than big N. And so we are done and that completes the proof. So if a sequence converges to a number, then the absolute value of that sequence converges to the absolute value of that number. Note that the converse is certainly not true. For example, consider the sequence negative one to the power of n. 
if we take the absolute value of that sequence, we'll have the sequence of absolute values of negative one to the n, which is just going to be a sequence of ones. And so this converges to, you could say, the absolute value of one. But just because the absolute values of the sequence converge to the absolute value of one, that certainly does not tell us that the original sequence converges to one, since the original sequence is oscillating between negative one and positive one. So again, the converse of this statement is not true. Mm -hmm.